Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Some Like It Pop, a bi-weekly look at the latest happenings in pop culture. I'm Bradley Stern, Editor-in-Chief of Pop Crush. I'm Samantha Vincenti, Managing Editor of Pop Crush. I'm Ali Zubiak, Associate Editor of Pop Crush. I'm Matt Donnelly, and I'm a Senior Writer of Pop Crush. Excellent. So uh, today we have a very, very special guest. Uh, Usually our Some Like It Pop guests are either pop stars or actors. But today, uh, we're joined by someone who might be able to provide some insight into the lives of some of our favorite celebrities. Uh, he's a global psychic and clairvoyant who Dr. Ki- who Dr. Phil called the next generation of psychic mediums, has appeared on Bravo's Million Dollar Listing, The Real Housewives of New York City, and his clients include Jennifer Lopez, Adam Lambert, and Janet Jackson. Everyone say hello to Thomas John. Yay! <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. Quite an intro. Um, so um, obviously this is a bit different for us. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about you know how you got started, how you found this profession? Um, well, I when I ever since I can remember, even when I was young, I would see things around people and feel things around people, and so as a young boy, I would share that with my parents, and they were. Um, not really super receptive to it they kind of actually were freaked out by it and as i got older i i really stopped kind of sharing it so much um and of course i had no realization that you know somebody can do that for a living or anything like that it's not like i went to my guidance counselor and was like hey i want to be a psychic (laughs) you know or i talked to dead people uh what college should i go to so um it wasn't really till really later in life when i was in college that i sort of um another series of events kind of took me full circle i i started to meditate more and i started to learn that i could kind of control it and turn it off and on um, and th- th- things like that that sort of uh, made it more accessible for me and stuff. And um, kind of like anything else, it just became a calling just because I started to do readings for people and, you know, had to do more of that. Just like kind of anything else, it just kind of grew into a bigger thing. Were you still receptive to everything when you um, were kind of ignoring it? Or were you just like, no, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to pretend like it's not happening. Well, it's it's sort of we're all born really intuitive and, and we actually all have an ability to connect with the spirit world and be more intuitive. I think what happened was it is, it is kind of like a, almost like a muscle. You do have to develop it to a degree. And and the more you interact with it, the stronger it gets. So I think what happened is, is because I got so much feedback from my parents, like, don't talk about that. That's bad. That's the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my mom would take me to therapists or things like that. It, it sort of went, I, I got like freaked out by it. So I, I started to really ignore it. But I remember even being like 10 and 11 years old and, and seeing things or, or somebody like somebody would die in our family, like not even anybody close, but I remember like my great uncle passed away like the day before I had like a dream about him. And it was really like, I knew he was going to die and um, but I like didn't tell my parents about it at all you know so it was that that type of thing mm-hmm. and then when you said you know how to turn it on and off did you find that when you could access it more that it ever became overwhelming at any point like was there a need when you need um, to turn it off or shut it out or yeah I mean it definitely I mean I think that um, yeah when I was growing up just because I, I I wasn't scared by it at first but as I got older I started to realize like it was different or something and, and it wasn't accepted and so I think that that made me want to just ignore it more was there a specific person who encouraged you once you had kind of tamped it down when you were learning was it like one specific person who encouraged you to kind of pursue it or was it just um well the first person that I ever saw that was deceased was my grandfather who I didn't have any connection with because he died before I was born but he was the one that started to visit me and and I would tell my mom and dad things and at you know my I'm really close to my mom now and she says that at first they you know they didn't know what was going on but then what happened is is I started to tell them things that like there's no way I would be able to know there's no way that they had like talked about that they were things like that they didn't even know things like that so that's kind of when it became more real for them um, I think as far as encouraging me is as I got older, I like I said, I started to meditate and take classes and I became more comfortable with it. And I and I started to kind of go on a little bit of a quest myself to kind of figure out what it was all about and stuff. And I actually lost, you know, there were some by that time in my life, there was some more significant deaths in my life. So I was kind of more curious before that. I didn't really have anybody that died that I knew that I really wanted to like connect with or anything and so as I got older um, I I did want to kind of explore it more and I think that kind of like 
maybe validated it for me in a way. And then is it more, is it mostly do you, where the ability comes from, do you point to it mostly as a life and death or is it also just things come to you when you meet someone and you're like, grapes they like grapes you know what i mean yeah like yeah yeah no, there's definitely <laughs> yeah there's definitely things in people i mean i'm an i'm an intuitive psychic clairvoyant and also medium so sometimes i communicate with someone who's passed or sometimes i might just get a message for that person of, of something that you know they want to share or there might be it might be something in their auric field or something around them so it, it's not always about the dead people okay mm-hmm. and and where does it get to the point where so you, you start realizing that you're intuitive and all of a sudden you're you know uh you count jennifer lopez as a client how did how did it get to that point um mm. where you were you know had celebrity well, clients really just word of mouth i mean i think just by, in, by proxy of living like in new york and la and spending a lot of time there i think you know i think you know if i lived in you know montana i'd probably have a lot of farmers <laughs> i mean it's just kind of like proxy of where i live i think right. um you know, and, and I just start, you know, just coincidentally start. And I've always been somebody who's wanted to share my message and not been afraid of, you know, media or things like that. So I just think it attracts a certain certain people and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I always say celebrities have problems, too. So they, they, they usually have the same questions that everybody else has. So mm-hmm. do you find that people are receptive to, um, you know, the, the readings that you have or or things that you tune into? generally or do you are you met with a lot of you know skepticism not really i mean i I think i mean i think when you are doing this work i mean there's always a skepticism i think when you start telling people oh, i talk to dead people and angels and you know most people are gonna be like what you know but in general i would say most people are extremely respectful of it and they they you know and and i don't think i've had you know i i actually welcome skepticism i have no problem with people being skeptic um and asking questions and sort of suspending judgment until that i mean i think that just makes sense um but um you know then it kind of trans you know transforms at times into people that are just more like cynical about it or mean about it and stuff and, and that is kind of just i think is stupid but um I, no I, I think that yeah i mean there's always yeah i think there is a little bit of that and i think when you're in this field you're always going to have that you know you're always going to have people that are just going to want to know more and question it and test it and things like that it's just kind of how i think it is yeah you yeah. probably get asked this a lot but um do you ever see anything really bad about um, someone you know there is that side to things where you know sometimes i've even had it like in friendships or you know or somebody i'm on a date with where i'm like oh you know uh <laughs> i i think that you do see the underbelly of things i mean the good thing is is most people are actually good people and and, and most people are you know that you know that you know you might see somebody's flaws or things like that i don't really pick up on bad things in terms of like Unless there's something, usually the spirit world brings through things that you can do to change. So I might get something like, um, oh, you know, your father really has to look at his health. His health is really poor. And somebody might say, oh, yeah, you know, and that may be. But I wouldn't probably get something like, oh, tomorrow at three o'clock, you know, there's an anvil that's going to get dropped (laughs) on your head. Like, have a nice day. Um, It wouldn't work like that. I don't I've never had that happen because there's really nothing. It's like if there's not something you can do about it, it's not really they don't really bring it through um i have had pe- certain people that i've been told like i'm not supposed to read them at a certain point in their life and it may just be like what they're going through or things like that it just depends so how so like does so okay when that happens specifically mm-hmm. is it just like a feeling you get that you shouldn't read them yeah mm-hmm. just like a sense yeah like it's a, like a foreboding kind of thing i would thing? say it's just sort of a sense of there's not um, as you know there might not be as much around them mm-hmm. or it might just be that it's not the right time for them not so much foreboding mm. yeah what do you find that that most of your clients ask what are the most common questions or things that they want to know I mean, I guess if it's in terms of their loved one, it's a lot about, you know, wanting to make sure that person's okay, wanting some validation from them, wanting to check in with them. Um, I think if it, you know, it depends um, if it's more of a, of a light, you know, life thing, you know, then, you know, they have a lot of questions about, 
you know, certain, you know, uh, maybe their purpose, maybe, you know, love life, career things. I mean, my, my job is not to really like to tell people what to do, but it's sort of I will kind of I can sometimes bring through messages to kind of put things on somebody's path or maybe something that they are questioning, you know, give them some sort of validation whether to go this way or that way and stuff. And, you know, you have to also use your own intuition and logic that goes with that. Um you know, to, to kind of get the full story and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of wanted to, you know, take us through, I, I know we had talked about um, some specific uh, pop stars and, mm -hmm. and celebrities. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to get your read on them if, if you're willing to. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think somebody that we've um, been talking about a lot and has always been on my mind, um, <laughs> we'll start with uh, Britney Spears. <laughs> um, of course. So uh, she is about to perform at the VMAs. Um, she's got a lot of things brewing right now, and I'm very curious to know what you what you're getting from her. I feel I, I feel that she's going to actually be focusing a lot more on like her her um, her personal life. Like I feel like she there's a lot of things coming up for her career, but I feel more maybe like a really sh very significant relationship, maybe even like a wedding, something like that. I, I, I feel more toward, like she's going to be focused on that area of her life. Um, her, But I feel like in terms of her performances and in terms of her all that type of stuff, I feel that um, it's she's I feel like she's going to continue to do well and, and, you know, be very, you know, she's she's going to still continue to have a lot of accomplishments. And, and I think I feel like, you know, any sort of misfires she's had in the past, I feel like she's going in like a whole whole new direction. Mm -hmm. Bradley would agree. I would absolutely <laughs> agree. I sense that same. Um, this one might might be a little more chaotic. Uh, Justin Bieber. I feel he's going to, I mean, I don't know exactly if, it, I don't think it's going to be like this year, but I feel in the next five years he's going to leave music or take a whole break from it and go in a whole new direction. I mean, I, I feel like... I mean, his energy is just really chaotic, but I, I feel like he's going to take a big break from music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's going to. I would maybe, believe that. Yeah, maybe yeah, either leave well. leave music. I feel like he may come back, but like maybe more as a producer. But I don't. I don't see him making albums so much as, as much mm -hmm. anymore. Believers are about to be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a good one. Kylie Jenner, Ali's favorite. <laughs> God. <laughs> Kylie Jenner. Um. She's going to be sep she's going to be totally separating from her family in terms of I feel like she's just going to be her like I even feel like there might be a feud but I, I just see her being her own like building her own kind of separate empire like she's doing now but I see it getting much more there's going to be much more of a and she's going to have her own show too she's going to have a whole separate show like I just see her going in a whole different direction but I feel like there might actually be a feud like there might be family that don't speak <gasps> I'm excited to her. That. That. Yeah. To each mm -hmm. other. Maybe she would like decide to go to Bravo instead of E or something. And that would oh. set it off. <laughs> that could. Um, okay. Moving on to uh, Beyonce. Well, I feel, I mean, she's going to have another child. I feel she's going to have another child, but I see, I, I, I see her like, um, I feel like with her relationship, I see them living totally separate lives, really. But I, I, I don't see them really like actually divorcing. But I, I feel like maybe living in separate homes or something like. But, 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 I feel that, um, uh, yeah, I, that's the main thing. She, she is going to have another baby. Mm -hmm. Sam, do you have concerns about that? I'm a mm -hmm. little concerned, yeah. <laughs> but I could also see the separate lives thing for sure already yeah. being true. So. And it's probably something we won't really know a lot about, but I just feel energetic. Like, I feel she's going to continue to be, like, really private about it. But I see them having separate lives for sure. And there's also somebody I see who's going to step forward, like, really in a very specific way around her husband. Like, maybe with pictures or um, things like that to, like, you know, say that he's done. So, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be something more explicit. The proof. The proof. The receipts. <laughs> the lemonade proof. Mm-hmm. Quite possible. That would Certainly. be so good for Pop Crush. It would be. <laughs> it would be. Kylie we kind of hope for it and don't at the same time. <laughs> um, I just want the best for Beyonce. Yes. Uh, and finally, uh, somebody who's been in the news a lot lately and forever lately, 
um, Taylor Swift. Had a hard year. Her, her. I just feel like her, her karma with love is not going to be good in this lifetime. I wouldn't be surprised if she never gets married. Really? And just dates and has different relationships. But I really don't, I don't know that that's something that she's going to get a lot. I don't see, not in the near future. Yeah. Professionally, is, is she still uh, on track? Do you feel like there's going to be backlash, you know, with her music? Or do you think that she's actually going to sort of triumph? You know, and even get bigger somehow. Or? Oh, she's going to get bigger, and a big thing for her is she's going to start with um, helping young artists, like in terms of like in a really specific way. Like she might start some sort of school, or she might start some sort of like big program. Like I feel, or maybe even like a TV show. But I see her helping young artists, maybe like or like a, a a label that's just for young people. But I see that she's going to start doing that. Interesting. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I could see Moving that. It would be good mentioning. PR as well. It would yes, be. It would be. What <laughs> she, she needs she help does need with. right now. Does anyone have any uh, specific questions about those artists that they might have some some lingering questions? Well, we we <laughs> heard rumblings that Beyonce might be performing at the Video Music Awards, <laughs> and we know it's very soon. So, but do you do you see anything? I sense that she is. That? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm like, is she there right now? <laughs> I, feel, <laughs> I feel like there it might be a combined performance. Like maybe she's going to be with somebody, another person. That's it. I'm calling a car. Yeah. Go, I'm going to go down to MSG. Very interesting. Do you, and how do you feel about Britney's VMA performance? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I can't really. She's going to do, yeah, she's going to, I, I feel it's going to go well. Yeah. I don't see there being like a big, you know, drama over or anything. It's going to go well. Okay. I'm right. just very nervous. <laughs> Sigh of relief. Um, as far as Justin Bieber, do you think that uh, Selena Gomez will ever be in his life again or no just as friends and stuff. yeah yeah i don't see good, it, you know. good. <laughs> as it should be mm-hmm. i did want to ask i noticed like right before we dived into beyonce you took a bit of like a pause or hesitation mm-hmm. was there mm-hmm. something more difficult with her or was it something you just had to explore a little bit more deeply um yeah it was um yeah just sort of uh, it, it just the, sometimes the images that i see i have to kind of interpret them so sometimes i have to understand what i'm getting is it like a you actually see pictures of people, or is it more like abstract and you kind of have to interpret what that is? It depends. It, it I mean, it, it's it's sometimes it's a feeling, sometimes it's a sense, sometimes I'll actually see something around mm-hmm. somebody, you know. But it, it just depends. Mm-hmm. Do you find it's easier, especially with in-person things? Do you find more people, like some people have like louder screaming signals than mm-hmm. other people? Yeah. Yeah, I feel, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, there's definitely there, there, there's personality over there, you know. So it just depends. Sometimes it depends, like what their personality was like. But, but, and, and, and so that's a factor. Depends how open the person is. Depends just a, a lot of different perspectives. Mm-hmm. Are any of us giving off screaming signals like <laughs> Sam said? <laughs> I feel like your dead grandmother's around you a lot. There's a there's your mom's side of the family on your mom's your mom's mom is like a really powerful energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would... Um, I feel like she um, there was a lot of suffer. I feel like there was suffering with her passing, or um, you know, she it feels like she was. I don't feel like she died suddenly. I feel like she was sick for a while. So it's almost like she wants to just say that she's in a better place over there, and she she's not in that pain anymore. Um, and she um, and I see the letter E. So I don't know if that's a, like a name. Usually, her name is Elaine. Yeah. So that's just her. And she's got a lot of. I mean, they, they, they're not in a body over there, so they're like it's a soul. So, but they come through sometimes in a body. Um, so they they're like I said, they're not over there in a body, but so that we understand who they are. So, for some reason, I see her with a lot of hair. So I don't know if she had like me. It could have been even when she was younger and more vibrant and healthy. But she she has like thick hair. I'm seeing. Um, and, um, and she, I, th- I feel like she's with her parents and stuff like that. But the main thing I'm seeing is that she, was she close to your mom? Was yes. clo- yeah. Yeah. There's a necklace that she keeps talking about, um, that, yeah. that, 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 that is, was passed down and stuff, but she's so proud it. of you. I feel like she's oh. really, really, really I'm making proud crazy of you. facial expressions right <laughs> yeah. now. You can't tell because we're yeah. recording. I actually wear that necklace. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was, uh, yeah. I was, that was I wasn't really, expecting that, that at all. very yeah, on, on point. <laughs> Well, now that all of us are suitably <laughs> spooked, <laughs> um, can you can you tell us uh, a little bit about you know where we could 
find more from you or, or what you're um, working on or anything like that right now? I'm working on another book, okay. and I am at um, <clears throat> I'm at mediumthomas or um, dot com. So you can check me out there, Medium Thomas on Twitter. Um, and so yeah, and I do different events. I do online classes, um, rolling out a bunch of new web webinars and stuff. So I go actually go online and do teachings for people. So and then I do some readings at the end of it. Um, so you can kind of log in from your computer, or your smartphone. Um, yeah. So just find me there. I'm a good tweeter. So. Awesome. <laughs> well, uh, I'm officially a believer. Yeah, and me too. That is <laughs> me too. <laughs> really struck. Um, yeah. Great. So anyone, any other questions or should we? No, that was awesome. That was awesome. Any, yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. great. Cool. Well, um, thank you so much again for thank joining us. Thank you for having me. It was this a pleasure. Was great. It was great. Um, for more, uh, some like it pop, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and check us out at popcrush.com. Follow us on Twitter at pop crush and YouTube Instagram. pop crush music and Instagram. Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody.